enter into the era surrounding Jesus Christ, Isa al-Masih alayhi salam. Every uh, messenger of Allah and every prophet had to face trials and tribulations and many of them rejected them and such is the path of people of truth. So I begin with a verse in Surah Al-Imran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Truly Allah chose Adam and Nuh and the descendants of Abraham and of Imran above all mankind. For his messengership, a people alike and the seed of one another. Wallahu sami'un alim, Allah is all hearing, all knowing. So now we're going to go into the Quran from Adam Quran in different passages. And we're going to talk about a number of characters all at once in one era. They will be Zakariya alayhi salam, Maryam alayhi salam, her mother, Isa alayhi salam, and Yahya, John the Baptist as he's called in the, in the Bible. Five of these people all at once in one era they lived. Behold, when the wife of Imran said, O oh Allah, Unto you I vow that the child in my womb is to be devoted to your exclusive service. Accept that then from me, surely you alone are all hearing, all knowing. And Allah calls her the wife of Imran. So she had a baby in her womb. So she said one day, O oh my Lord, whatever's in my womb, I devout to him to you, so accept it from me, O oh my Lord. In another verse of the Qur'an, she says, O oh Allah, I have devout my child that's in me for your service. And then Allah says, When she came to give birth, she expected a boy, but instead it was a girl. So she said, O oh my Lord, O oh my Lord, I have given birth to a daughter. And she said, And the boy is not like a girl, but, and I have named her Mary. She expected a boy. In those days, you've got to understand, there were synagogues and monasteries. They call them now churches. These places of worship, these temples, the ones who looked after them were priests. One of them was Zakaria, he was one of the priests of the temples, but not the priests like they have today. They were devout carers, caretakers and teachers in the places of worship, in the temples. Remember, there was no Christianity yet. And only the men were allowed to do that because they had to have interaction with people and women had to be more conservative. They couldn't do what the men did. But when she gave birth to a daughter, she couldn't fulfill her vow. But instead she knew that Allah had given her a daughter and she said, the boy is not like a girl. Meaning, men are better at certain things and women are better at other things which the men are not. Each one compliments the other. In that time, the daughter couldn't do that role. But then she said, Oh Allah, I have named her Maryam anyway. Oh my Lord, I ask you to protect her and her offspring, her children, from the shaitan, the outcast. Protect her, oh my Lord. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replies and he says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took Maryam and accepted her an honorable acceptance. And he made Maryam السلام, grow up a beautiful, righteous upbringing. And Zakaria took, fostered her care. So Maryam السلام, grew up with her mother and father initially. As she grew up and she, when she became a teenager, her mother had, did, had you know, vowed to keep her in service of Allah. Although she can't do what the men do, she still had to go and stay in the temple. So in the temple, for a girl to stay, someone from the temple had to foster her and take care of her. So all the priests and the noblemen the, the, of, of religiosity, the righteous men, they got together. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes, each one of them started to debate. Each one wants to take care of Maria. No one had ever seen such righteousness and manners and character as much as Maryam السلام, she became very popular all over the world and everybody knew how devout and how amazing she was so they all started to debate over who's going to be the person who becomes her carer the one who is her guardian 
Allah says in the Quran, O oh Muhammad, to Muhammad Sallallahu and you weren't there when they were casting their lots. There was a little river and there was a current. And they got these uh, lots, these sticks, and they would throw them. And if the stick that came back would mean that that person had another chance, and the sticks that went to the current would have gone. The sticks that came back, they throw them again, and then again, and then again until one is left. And Zakaria alayhi salam stick came back by itself, by the will of Allah. And so, uh, by the miracle of Allah, Zakaria alayhi salam became her foster carer. And he gave her a little apartment in the, in the uh, temple. We can even call it masjid, a place of worship. In the masjids those days, they had little tiny rooms, a little bit higher, mihrab. Allah says something amazing. Zakaria alayhi salam used to go and check on her. Every time he entered the mihrab, he would always see with Maryam special types of food. So he would see, for example, grapes with her when it wasn't grape season. Or he would see with her fruit that doesn't even grow in Jerusalem. And he used to say to her, where did you get this from, Yemen? She used to say to him, it is from Allah. And so Zakaria alayhi salam knew that she was not only special, there was some holiness to her, something divine from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now don't mistake it. Maryam alayhi salam was not a prophet. Now when Zakaria saw this, he was about 80 or 90 years old. And up till now, he was, there was no issue. He, didn't, he wasn't bothered that he didn't have any children. He didn't have any daughters or sons. But when he kept seeing Maryam like that, he started thinking, I'm soon going to leave this temple, I'm going to die. And the people who are on the truth, they're also going to die. And he must have felt that the people around were losing their religion and their ways. So he thought to himself, I need some children of my own who will carry the truth to the people so that the message of Allah continues. And I would love it to be from myself. So he turned to Allah and he made a dua. Relate the story of Allah's true slave, Zakaria. One night, he sat and called upon Allah, called upon Allah in secret, low voice, whispering, but inside of you, you are calling out, Oh my Lord, my bones have withered and the white hairs have grown, grown all over me like they, they flared up with whiteness everywhere. He didn't have a single black hair. And oh my Lord, I know that every time I've made dua to you, I have never been unblessed. I've always succeeded. You've always shown me the way. And then he said, Oh my Lord, grant me a son who will inherit me and inherit the progeny of Yaqub. He meant that someone who can learn my message and teach the people my message. So one day, Bil came to Zakaria when he was in his temple. And he says to him, O oh Zakaria, we give you good news of a son. So he turns around and asks a question which he knows the answer to anyway, but he's a human being who is in shock, he's so excited. But, but, but how, how, can I have a, how can I have a son while I have grown so old in age? And my, my wife, she's barren. And Jibreel alayhi salam replies to him by saying, Oh, but it is. Very easy. Your Lord says, it is upon me very easy. And then he says, and remember your Lord says to you, I created you in the beginning when you were nothing. So how is that going to be hard upon Allah to create a new son for you while you are old and your wife is barren and past menopause? He's introducing to the Christians something important. He's saying, before I talk to you about Jesus Christ, I'm going to talk to you about the common prophet you all believe in with the Muslims and he is Zakaria. He had a son when he was old in age and his wife was barren. So why would you say that Jesus Christ cannot be born also without a father when you believed that Zachariah had a son when it was impossible as well? What's the big deal? Allah can create that or he can create that. You should not make it like he is God's begotten son. Then Allah says, 
and we shall name him Yahya. لم نجعل له من قبل سمية. Allah says we have never given anyone this name before him. Now Zakaria alayhi salam said, Oh Allah, how will I know when my wife is pregnant? Oh my Lord, give me a sign. Allah says, you will not be able to speak with people for three days. Only in signal, big sign language. So when your wife is pregnant, you're going to know by the fact that you're going to wake up and you're not going to be able to speak for about three days. So he came out of his, his apartment in the temple and he went to his people. When the time came and he wasn't able to speak, he got out of his temple and he's a messenger of God, Zakaria. He wanted to still give the message to people. He couldn't speak. So instead, Allah says that he delivered a message in a different way. Uh, he came out and started signaling to the people to praise Allah and to glorify Allah and to continue with zikr in the night and in the day. Now Allah introduces to us Yahya when he was born. He says, Oh Yahya, take this book with strength. Follow the Torah and apply it and address it to the people and apply it with strength. And we gave Yahya knowledge and wisdom and intelligence like a prophet from when he was a little boy. So Yahya was something special. And then Allah SWT says something amazing about Yahya. He said, we made Yahya be filled with kindness and compassion. And he was highly intelligent and pure. He was among the most pious. Peace be upon him, Yahya. The day he was born, and the day he will die, and the day that he will be resurrected alive. So now Zakaria is around giving the message. He's got a son. Yahya has begun his prophethood. And Yahya was born about eight months or so before Jesus Christ, Isa al Messiah. Let us see how Isa alayhi salam was now born. 